Well, last week, a number of you said that you enjoyed my little trip to the nursery. And today, I'm gonna to plant the first of my garlic. And it's quite exciting. I think I might do, if the weather holds, this experimental garlic bed. I'll show you. So those of you that haven't watched my earlier video on this bed, well, why not? Go back and have a look. Because this bed suffered from white rot and the onions that I put in here were some of the worst affected. So there's been lots and lots of suggestions as to what to do, but the main conclusion is that white rot is pretty difficult to get rid of. So what I decided on here is that I would try one of the suggestions, and that is to take the tops and some of the bits and bobs from that infested crop, chop it up quite finely, and include it into the soil. The theory here is that that would have encouraged the white rot to develop and mature and then run out of anything to feed off of and therefore it basically comes to an end or at least it's diminished considerably. And that should, in theory, leave the ground relatively free of the problem. And that's what I'm gonna try and see if there's any degree of success from that method. Some people swear by it. So I'm gonna take the few weeds there are here out very carefully because I don't want to disturb the soil too much and I don't want to handle the soil too much. I will change my gloves and give this hoe or tool a bit of a clean when I've finished. And then I'm going to plant some of the garlic. Let's call it sacrificial garlic. It is in fact Rhapsody, a purple variety, Rhapsody White, which I bought from the garden centre the other day. You probably saw me buy it in the video. And then we're going to leave it and allow it to do its thing, just like you normally do with garlic. And we'll see whether we have a white rot free bed in good time or whether it's diminished somewhat. That's the plan. And fingers crossed, because I really want to grow garlic in this bed. The other reason I'm not going to disturb this soil too much is that the cats will immediately use it as a litter tray and I can already see a bit of a problem over there in the corner. So I'll get on and weed this and then I'll get to planting. Right, the next step is to get this garlic out and break it into its smaller bulbets, as I like to call them. So this is Rhapsody, or Rhapsody White, and it's a purple looking garlic. It's got very big cloves in it, which is their official name. And it takes some busting into, there we go. So, not going to get too fussy, but they're about an inch across these, so they're fairly big. Oh, there's some smaller ones there. And it doesn't really matter what size they are, I use them all. So there's, let's see how many we've got, six. Out of a big bulb like this, I reckon there might be 15. Oh, well, we're up to nine, 10. 11, oh, that's two, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We're getting around to some really small ones now. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. We'll put those in 22 
a really small one, 23. So if you are looking at bulbs in the garden centre and you think actually they're quite expensive because they are a fair price, then, you know, circa 20 plants from one bulb is what you're really getting. Okay, I'm going to space these out so that we get a nice even spread of them. I'm not going to put them too close to the edge. And of course, with garlic, you put the blunt end into the ground. That's a lovely one. And the pointy bit sticking up. And that makes sure that the leaf grows out of the top. All right, so there we are. Uh, let's move these over here. One there, one there, one there. Well, it's not going to cover the whole bed, that's for sure. One there, one there, one there, one there. What have we got left? I can see a lot of chaff now that I need to sort from the bulb. So I've got one in there, there, there. So that's one, two, three, four across. One, two, three, four, five rows. And this will be the sixth row. So nearly filled this bit of bed. And I've got them anything from sort of, well, seven or eight inches apart. And that bit of space at that end means that if I need to, I can net over and the net will gather at the base and not encroach on the leaves. So. That one bulb was just about perfect and has done a four or five foot wide bed uh, or width of bed. And these are about probably four and a half feet in width. So I'm just going to get those so that they're just below the surface. And I don't really need a tool for that. I'm just going to use my finger, get them down there. And of course, garlic needs a period of really cold weather and that actually instigates the start of the process whereby the bulb splits and creates more bulbs and that of course is how we end up with a nice sized garlic that we can use for cooking. So planting them as I am now in October is just about the ideal time. I think it's the 3rd of October today. And this is about the time every year that I plant them. And that's always worked out for me. So I guess it depends on your local climate, but we'll get some really, really cold weather fairly soon, back end of November probably. And that'll be, oh, I nearly put that one in the wrong way. That will be the weather that we need that makes those bulbs split out. And then my expectation is that I'll see the green leaves coming up in the early spring and then they really go for it and we get to harvest them back end of June, July, perhaps even early August for some people depending on your climate. Right, we're approaching the last few in the experimental bed. Three to go. And I'm going to put the others in two other different types of location uh, that are a bit unusual because of the white rot. One is going to be in the polytunnel and the other is going to be in pots, which many of you suggested. So there we go. The experiment is underway and hopefully it will succeed. Well, this is a particularly exciting time because I'm just about to take out the first leeks of the year. And we haven't tasted these leeks yet, so I'm really looking forward to that. And nothing special, just boiled leeks. And they go great with any meal. And we're really looking forward to tasting these. So I'm looking for anything that's a substantial size, mainly because once the plant matures, it is at risk of bolting. So if you get some nice big ones like this one here, then get them out early and then you reduce the risk of crops that have got 
flowers on them. And of course, when they bolt, you get that rather long shoot. Here's one with a flower head on it. And that goes right down into the core of the leek and renders it, well, pretty hard in the middle and really not very edible. So let's get the roots off of this and I'll show you. And that's a fine Welsh grown leek. And we'll have two of those. Let's see if we can find another one. And we've got quite a lot of really substantial stems here. So we'll have this one. And they come out really easy. You just need to get the fork under the roots so that you don't break into the flesh of the stem. And then get the bulk of the soil off. There's a little leak that's trying to grow there. That one will go to the side. And there we are. Another fine leak and I'll just pull off the leaves off of these, take the root off properly, cut the top off and take the edible bit back home. Good times. Well, that's given these leeks a bit of a wash in the water bath. And now I'm gonna prep them with a finely honed spade. Just give it a bit of a clean. And then it's a swift down onto the roots. She gets rid of that. And then at the top, And then we can take off the outer leaves. And then they're ready for cooking. Perfect. We had a fair old wind the other night and this particular purple sprouting broccoli plant decided that it would lean over good and proper so I'm gonna get it well tied to the stake so that it survives and well the beans survived really well in the high winds uh, I wouldn't say they were a real test but it certainly did a good job right now this plant is just a bit too far away from the stake so I'm gonna move the stake and get him back up right. Don't want to break him. It's a fine line between getting him in the right position and breaking the stem. Uh, we'll get the leaf broken. There we are. We'll tie it about there and see if we can get it to grow up like all the others. And these are doing really well. So planted, what, early July to get them in the ground and get them so that they're established and that's what they look like when they get to that point and that gives them the best possible chance during the winter winds and rains so I'm just going to tie him fairly securely in a couple of places so I can be sure that he'll do well in those blustery conditions I say he it's quite probably a she right there we go that's well and truly trussed up. And these are all done well. And I think there's just one or two in the other row that I put together that need the same attention. Let's go and look. Yep, so one or two of these thinner ones or smaller ones that seem to take a little bit of a knock. So I'll do the same with them. And this one's a bit closer already to the stake. And as these get bigger, so they'll need to be tied again as they get higher and we go up the stems. So I'm going to take the opportunity to do one or two of these so that I don't have to do that later. Now uh, they certainly are growing taller. There's two down there that need attention as well. All right, that's, that one's going to be okay, I think. Let's give him one more tie. And the wind isn't quite so strong around this side, but it just shows when it really gets going, you need to tie these broccoli everywhere because they are all susceptible 
to being broken or leaning over. But they're looking well. I'm just going to do, I can see a ladybird on the stem of this one. And he looks pretty cold and very stationary. But who knows, he may come through. Let's hope he does. You can see the impact the wind had on the parsnips, blown lots of the leaves flat to the ground. And I've also had to tie up some of these kale against these iron stakes just to keep them from flopping over. And I'll probably have to do that with some of the others as well. Right, that's wind damage controlled. Well, these pots were from my Desiree potato, at least the soil was, and the Desiree potatoes had scab. So I've tried to keep this separate, and it's been my intention from that point to use this soil to grow my garlic in. And I just need to level these off, and I need a little bit of extra soil for that. So I'm gonna take from my stock over there and just add to the surface get them all even and then this is where my next batch of garlic are going to grow from and we probably need a little bit more i just need to be careful that i'm not transferring scab with this so i'm just going to take one or two more pots and fill them up with soil just to layer the top off Now, I don't know whether scab transfers in that way, but I just don't want to take any chances. So there's one. And there's the other. Right, let's just get a few of these leveled. I think these ones up the end need a little bit more. And then the garlic, hopefully, will enjoy the experience. The cold won't matter because as I described they need that and I'm gonna select Solent white to go in here and as I said on my video that's the area I come from and one other subscriber said that's the area they're from and another one actually went to the Isle of Wight oh, and saw where these garlic were grown In fact, they said that they had a tasting session of the various garlic that were there. How fabulous is that? Right, so same approach here. I'm going to break up these bulbs and into the individual cloves and spread them across these eight pots. And that's going to be pretty dense, a bit more dense than the experimental bed but when you're doing pots and you're using compost it's at a bit of a premium really so these are a slightly smaller bulb this solent white I'm just going to count how many i get out of here that's three four five uh, gosh they're really hard six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So similar, a bit smaller bulbs. Um, so 16, and that will spread nicely across these eight pots, I think. So I'm just gonna do exactly the same. Push them down in, one, two, three, four, five. I think six is about the optimum, really. If I put them any closer together, I think that might cramp their style. So 
24 per group of four pots. And I'm probably on that basis only gonna need two of these bulbs and that's okay because there's plenty of other places I can put those. I've got some half cut barrels which didn't come to much this year and I tried to grow carrots in them and the cats had them. So I'll probably put at least one of these into those larger barrels. Okay, I'm gonna work my way through and plant these up. There we go. That worked out just perfectly. And I've taken off any of the little bits of outer casing for those garlic because we've got a very big population of jackdaws here. And traditionally, during the spring, they'll pull out all the onion sets for the folks that have planted them on the plots. And they'll certainly see these if they're on the soil and associate them with those onion sets and I expect they'll try and pluck out the garlic so I just don't want them to have any clues. So that's out. I've given them a bit of a water because some of that compost was a bit dry although this climate it's been raining while I was doing that I'm sure we'll water them in pretty quick. So that's two lots of garlic in and I'll save the rest for a little bit later on and particularly the extra early white that are going in the polytunnel because I'm convinced that in the not too distant future it's going to be so wet I'll be pleased to get in the polytunnel and I'll show you that another time. Well I hope you've enjoyed today's video and if you have then why not like and subscribe and if you want notifications about my uploads which are Sundays and Wednesdays at 8pm and click on the bell too. Der Hund war.